what a game. Um, and uh, first of all, really, really good opponent in Oregon State. Uh, knew it would be uh, that type of game. Um, knew the style of play they wanted to come in with. And obviously the weather um, was something that both teams had to overcome. Um, just proud of the way our guys uh, continue to just play, you know, and at the end, shoot, it ended up being not really nice. But, uh, you know, that was, a, that was a grind. And, uh, you know, guys just finding a way to win. So coming through when it matters most. We've done that a few times now. The first half, you could have gone into the locker room uh, with uh, just giving up three points. Um, that, that little uh, offside kind of extended their drive. Um, how does it take to refocus and kind of get those penalties out of the way? Yeah, I mean, really on defense, that was the, kind of the key thing. I think three times, you know, just uh, the, the short little uh, defensive uh, offside. So, you know, those are disappointing um, because, you know, we're talking about it and even at halftime, just like that's the one thing that's uh, kept their drive alive. So, um, you know, got to got to do a better job. You know, when we're in that moment, and, um, you know, penalties were really the thing. Maybe went here and there that stopped us offensively too. The, the one at the end, of the beginning of the third quarter, um, disappointed. You know, we didn't get any points. You know, that was uh, that was a tough one to swallow right there. Was this a real gut check for your defense? It seemed like guys either didn't play or played partially, didn't come back, or did come back. Yeah. It seemed like you were missing a lot of guys. Yeah, it really was. Um, you know, I know that one drive had to been right around 16 plays. I may be off a little bit there, but um, you know that that one when you, you see just the wear and tear of the guys, uh, you you know that um, in the fourth quarter, um, those are sometimes things that come back to haunt you. But uh, you know, we just can't get the first down going. We can't get the can't get the, the offense uh, on point there um, until the very end. But um, they just did a good job defense hanging in there you know, the, the entire half, really, um, and just playing the next down. And sooner or later, a guy will take it in and um, go and make a play, you know, tackle for a loss. Uh, we know that if we got them behind the chains, um, that's an area that they did not want to be in. You know, that's a position they're not comfortable with, uh, having to drop back and pass. Um, you know, their backs were tough to bring down, um, but our guys just kept fighting. And, you know, we didn't give up the big one that goes for six, I guess, when I think about their running backs, which they've done a lot against other teams. and so. We just lined up, made him play another down by getting him on the ground. Did you game plan around the, the prospect of rain and, and did the weather affect the way you guys call offensive plays? Uh, I, yeah, we definitely, you're, you're always thinking of a couple, you know, or not a couple, but you definitely have some things in the plan. And I think our plan usually has that naturally, just control passes, um, the run game. Um, I, I think it was really a matter of seeing if we could if we could handle the rain, and I thought there were times we did a really good job. Uh, the, the, the balls that were, um, you know, maybe off the body, those were the tough, toughest ones. I can think of some high balls that, you know, were good throws. Um, and Mike was having no problem really spinning, spinning it. It was just a matter of reeling it in. But, you know, there's some times too where it paid off when you think about the touchdown to Rome in the left corner of the end zone in the first half. Um, you know, just letting guys go make plays, big body receivers, and their tough matchups. and. You know, that's a strength of ours versus uh, maybe not that it's a weakness, but one, just a good matchup in general for us. So, um, yeah, we have that stuff built in. Um, you know, even the last play, there's different options that we can do with that play. Um, really, the rain had subsided by that time, but um, those are the type of plays we had in the game plan. You guys had a third down to ice the game. There was third and three to go back shoulder to Rome which was a risk, but also, like yeah. you said, that's your bread and butter. So what went into, I guess, just the faith in both of those guys to know that this isn't a typical third and three call, per se, but yeah. that's going to win the game. Yeah, well, thank goodness they had to put us in a fourth and three, right? Yeah. <laughs> they made the play just like they've always done, uh, came through. Um, you know, there's other options on that play, and, you know, uh, very similar to, I guess, the Oregon game, uh, where you have uh, something to one side of the field, uh, and. Mike can always take that. It's a very high percentage uh, play for us. Probably even could have got the first down there. Um, but uh, him just knowing, you know, who, you know, knowing your personnel, uh, knowing your guy, and um, them just being so much in tune and on the same page, um, you know, we see that really about ninety percent of the time, ninety-five percent of the time in practice. So to me, it's not a. Um, you know, crapshoot whether you're going to make that play. Um, they just, it's just a big guy with a big catch radius uh, in Rome, and Michael knowing exactly where to put it. And, you know, as long as the line gives him a free look to be able to 
see where the defender's at and see uh, and have time to, to read it, um, he's uh, he's going to make that throw. On well, Oregon State's last drive, Dylan Johnson was kind of hobbling around on the sidelines, and then he went back in, had a couple of nice runs. Can you talk a little bit about Dylan? He doesn't look good. Right yeah, I don't know even what that injury is, um, uh, specifically what it is. So I did not see him hobbling uh, like you did. Um, so yeah, Will had to come in uh, there. and um, But one of those plays, I think he would have been in no matter what, just with the personnel grouping we wanted. But um, yeah, hopefully we can get him you know, back to 100% here soon. You, you got lost. a big, Go ahead. You got the big primary game next week, obviously. But I mean, do you do you stop and acknowledge with the team that you've you've secured a spot in the Pac-12 championship? Game? Yeah, I just uh, congratulating the guys just now. You know, in the locker room, it's just you know you're not backdooring into a, a championship game. Um, you're just going in and outright you know claiming a spot, and uh, that's you know there's I know there's a bigger picture piece to everything that we're uh, trying to accomplish too. But you know the first box is checked. You know, and that you can't win it unless you get there. And uh, I'm really proud, and um, that's one of our goals that we set forth. Uh, you know, when we start the season January 3rd, is uh, to win a Pac-12 championship. And so, you know, you have to you have to enjoy it. Otherwise, you know, what's the journey about if you just can't for a moment um, enjoy what's happening and uh, what you're a part of? So, um, you know, the guys are excited. They're celebrating um, in there a little bit, but I can honestly say that it's not some you know, crazy off the wall celebration. Um, they know that there's more business uh, to take care of. Uh, and I'm, I'm proud of, uh, you know, the way we'll get ready to play and finish this uh, regular season off. But does it feel like people probably try to nitpick and find reasons why, I mean, you guys aren't as good as your record says, all these close games and whatnot, but you keep beating these ranked teams in the yeah. five now. What, what do you think you're showing? Just like I mean, that, that's the thing. I mean, we just played three back-to-back -back teams that were ranked at that time, two of them on the road, right? I, I just, you know, and different styles. I mean, you got a team that's got a Heisman quarterback, you got it that's high-flying offense, you got a team that is physical on both sides of the ball last week, um, really well coached. I mean, they're the Pac-12 champions uh, two time. And so, you know, they're just, I mean, I, I don't know. I'm sure there is someone that's got a schedule as tough as ours here in the back half. But, um, you know, we're just playing, you know, ball against some, some really good opponents and finding a way to, to get it done. And, and you can get nitpicky on this and is it quite good enough or that's not quite good enough. But let's talk about our strengths. Let's talk about what we do well, you know. And I think there's a lot of things that we do well as a football team, and uh, we found, we've shown, you know, that that's the that's going to continue to be the case. So, I just think there's, you know, um, just so many different types of teams that we've played, um, and we found a way to win them all. You, you lost to Patala pretty early, and, and uh, Carson Brunner had to play almost the whole football game. Could you talk about those two situations? Uh, Raylan, you mean early? Well, did Tupatalo go down? He, he didn't even suit up. Oh. Yeah, he didn't even suit up. So, um, so you know, it wasn't available tonight. Just uh, hopefully we can get him back for next week. Um, you know, we probably know more at the beginning of the week. Um, but you know, I know Raylan uh, went down early, and so all of a sudden you go from a position that's really got the most depth, probably um, healthy depth uh, in our pro in our team, um, to you know guys having to gut. Got it out, and, and we know what those backs look like out there. They they had some really good running backs, and include the quarterback too, uh, DJ, with the run game, and and uh, it take it takes a toll. You know those guys just lining up every play and having to, having to bring it. So I'm proud of Eddie and, and uh, Carson. I mean even Raylan, you know, gotten gotten it out a little bit too, and, and being ready to go if needed. So was Jalen McMillan's usage tonight the the plan, or did you expect to use him more or less? Or? Yeah, I think there's I think there's certainly more. Um, Especially when it comes to targets, you know that you, you think uh, you can get. And I think it really came down to a little bit with the weather, maybe, um, just on where the ball ended up going uh, and what um, you know the continuity kind of developed. And you know Jalen's so good at third downs and and really picking apart the underneath stuff. Um, I think there were some times where some of those tight window throws and Mike's got to snap it off. Um, you know. I don't want to speak for him. Maybe he wasn't quite comfortable with some of those. He'd just rather throw those those inside fades and fade balls to, to, to the outside guys and um, you know things that are away from the defenders so that way you're not risking tip balls and, and balls that end up in the you know wrong hands. So uh, did a nice job there at the end of the half, I thought. You know, get the ball to the outside, uh, Westover and Giles Jackson, you know, catch the balls and fight for some yards. And then, of course, the touchdown to Rome. But we know Jalen's going to be a huge part of this uh, as we 
go through the rest of the rest of the final run here. And um, you know, every day that he's out here, every rep he takes, he's continuing to get stronger. I can see it in practice all week that he's getting to be more and more what uh, what we know Jalen to be. You've had some pretty special moments with Zion sitting there at the end of the game. Um, yeah, sure, good laugh. Have you kind of since his father's passing, have you kind of felt that relationship really grow? Yeah, I mean, I think our relationship's been really strong since. Uh, I mean, for, for quite a while, I mean, over over a year. Um, he knows how much I appreciate him, vice versa. So um, just, it's it's fun to, you know, it's a, it's a different feel and, um, than it was a few weeks ago. But, uh, man, he just, I, I watched him many times out there today and just given everything he has. And, um, you know, again, his commitment to this team is, is elite. Anything else for Coach? Yeah. Dylan Johnson is now at 879 yards in the season. What can you say about his improvement from the start of the year in terms of health or, you know? Yeah, it, it starts with his health. Um, you know, Dylan's health, uh, um, I think especially here the last half of the season, um, has really come along. He's worked hard uh, to get himself in, in a really elite shape, you know, and um, and just, you know, there's hard yards, especially on the one drive uh, at the beginning um, where he converted some, some short yardage or third down looks there and uh, falling ahead to the sticks to, to give us some, a new set of downs. So, um, man, he's just a huge part of our, our team right now offensively, you know, the success we're having. A lot of it depends on him, you know, being able to be that physical runner and then uh, the old line understand the thing, just give him a crack and a seam, he'll find a way. You know, they did a nice job on that one long run. I know he ended up turned over, but we got it back soon and, and then that field position changing was big for us there. Good.